the piano player, man, dear Lord, and the things of the, the surgery that he's going to go through. Father God, Lord, we know that you made us, dear Lord God, and that you can remake any problem, dear Lord God, that you can uh, uh, reform us, dear Lord, even if you desire to, dear Lord God. And Father, I just pray that you would uh, help him, dear Lord God, for your glory, Father, and Lord, that your will would be done, Father. And Lord God, we just thank you for the testimonies, dear Lord God. For Lord God, we, we know that we go through trials, Father God, Lord, and that you allow us to be purified, dear Lord. And I just pray, Father, that we give you glory, Father, in all things that we do. Father, we pray for those that aren't here this morning, Father, for whatever reason there may be, Father God, Lord, whether it be sickness, whether it be brokenheartedness, dear Lord God, or or maybe they might just be those that are destitute, Father. Lord, we pray uh, that you would help the lost and those that are weak and those that are tired, dear Lord, to want to uh, be in, in a place of worship, Father, that they want to be in a, in, in a heart of worship with you, Father. Lord, we pray for Sister Leona and we pray, Father, uh, for uh, uh, Bob and Gail and, and Father for Sadie and and for Lillian, dear Lord, and for Chris, and Lord, help those that are around who want to come and worship in the fellowship, dear Lord, in the family of God. Lord, we just ask you this morning that you'd be with God and that she teaches a lesson. I pray that you're going to be a part of Lord, that you have ears to hear, Father. Lord, God, that you grow us in your word. And it would be obedient God, to your word. Bless, bless Ray Ray and the children, dear Lord, Lord so they do. seek to do your will. And Lord, I just ask, Lord, that you would just help us this morning, Father. And for when that Pastor Toy brings the message, Lord, that living water, Lord, and the bread of life. Uh, Jesus, we know you the bread of life. Dear God, we just want to honor you with praises and singing. And Lord, just be, be together, Lord, to just... Lift up the banner of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, that you saved each and every one of us. Lord, I'm thankful for my Christian family, Lord. I'm so thankful, Lord, that yes. I have a house to live in, yes. Lord, and she want to take us somewhere else, Lord. God, help my family, Lord, and they need you desperately. God, if you don't get saved and unsaved, Lord, once you're saved, you're saved. But God, revive them, Lord. Help them, Lord. God, I don't have an enemy this morning. I might have an enemy, Lord, but I don't hate anybody. Lord, there's nobody in this world I wouldn't help, Lord, if you sent me to help them. God, just give me strength to do it to the end, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help Bob, Lord. He's not good help. Be with everyone here this morning, Lord. We just want to praise you and love you and be with you this morning, Lord. As we're with you all week, Lord. Thank you for the children in the church, Lord. They are a blessing, Lord. And bless all the pastors and sent them up to cross this morning and preaching the blood this morning, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that the soul be saved this morning, Lord. That God's desire, Father God, is to see someone come to you. But God, you give them a free will. Lord, they can say yes or no. He doesn't, you don't take that from us. But Lord, I ask that you pour out your convicting spirit upon all mankind, Lord. Because the trumpet's going to sound. And Jesus, you're, you're coming after us. I know that. You want to share the doubt. Lord, just help us today as you've helped us every day, God. We can't. That's the old grace. We give you praise, honor, and glory, and thank you for all the praise you for in Jesus' name. Amen. Just go ahead and have the teacher come up. Well, we forgot to bring our napkins today. How many did you have? Let me check what you have. How many did you have? Do you know? You don't know. Yes. Do you know how many check marks you had? What do we get check marks for? That's what we get before. Consider others better than yourself. All right. Okay.
open up your Bibles to um, Mark chapter 10. We'll go through our memory verse first. <coughs> Mark chapter 10. Verses 43 through 45. Let's wait for Autumn. Chapter 10. Verse, starting with verse 43. Autumn's going to read a verse, then Ray, and then Rusty. Okay, Autumn, you read verse 43. <coughs> but so shall it not be among you, but whoso answer will be great among you shall be your minister. Very right. You read 44. Um, you know the wrong place? I know I'm not wrong, but... Chapter 10, verse 43. I mean, 44. Son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for men. Okay. Well, one way to be a servant is to work, be able to work together as a team. Um, each of you had to read a part in order for us to quote the whole passage. You each wrote a little part. Um, what is, uh, okay, how did Jesus? serve us? What did Jesus do that served us? Yeah. He for our sins. Right. He, he, yeah. he died for our sins. What is a ransom? ransom? Give his life a ransom for many. What is a ransom? Rusty, maybe you can tell us. <clears throat> well, a, a ransom is to give, is to exchange something for, for something. What did Jesus exchange for us? His life. His life. Right. Okay. Now we're going to do a little... Yeah. <coughs> Not really a game. Um, <clears throat> okay. What you, Ray Ray, I need you to hold this. Okay. And um, what we're going to do is um okay each one of us has been hurt by wrong things that other people do um and what we're going to do is we're going to each of us are going to name something that um that you can do wrong like a sin and when you do that you're going to put a couple books in the crate that Ray's got okay and we're going to go around the room and everybody's going to do this. Everybody just put a couple songbooks in there. Just name something. I'm going to put a couple in. Um, I, it doesn't have to be something that you've done, but um, I have, I cheated. Okay? Rusty, you name something that you can do wrong. Steal. Put a couple books in there. Steal. Autumn, Ray Ray, you are going to go around and you're going to go to everybody to put books in there. You can use these right here as one of them. Okay, name something. 
What'd you say? Complain? That's a good one. Okay, go back to your daddy. Acting in anger. Oh, something that you can do wrong. Name a sin. Like lying. Okay, lying. That's one. Go up here to next person. Anybody got? I've talked about someone that should Oh, yeah. <coughs> These faces turn red. Yes, this is. <laughs>
chapter 18, starting at verse 21. to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Which if you do that, is four hundred and ninety times. Four hundred and ninety times. Now I don't think Jesus actually meant you are to forgive people four hundred and ninety times. I just think Jesus was saying there is no limit to how many times you are to forgive someone. <coughs> Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. <coughs> when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents, which if it was silver, that would be fifty-two million eight hundred thousand dollars. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife, and his children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But this same servant went out, and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence, which would be about $44. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told it to their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldst not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Okay, I want us to act this out. Okay? So you all stand up. I need one of you to be the master. Who wants to be the master? Wait, I want you to be the servant. Rusty, you want to be the master? Alright. <laughs> you come up here and you be the master. And Autumn, you're gonna be the next servant. Okay? <clears throat> now, I'm gonna be the jailer. I'm gonna bring Ray Ray to you. I'm going to tie him up. Let's got this thing in the... Tie him up. He told me he likes to be, likes tied to be tied up, so I figured he'd be and the one that'd be brought. Tied up. Yeah, now we can tickle him. He's like, oh no. Uh -huh. He's like, hmm? Okay. Alright. This man owes you 10,000 talents. Okay. Now, what do you, do you order him to be put in jail, to be sold? He's going to be put in, he's going to be put in jail. So you tell him. What do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to do with this servant? Throw him to jail until he pays the what thou owest. Okay. All right, here you go. Now, what do you do, Ray Ray? What did the servant do? He fell down. And he begged the master. What did he say? What would you say? You owe this owe him ten thousand talents, but you don't have it. They're gonna sell your sell your family. You're gonna be locked up. So what are you gonna do? Beg him begging for forgiveness. Forgive me, please. Please for, forgive me. Okay, now what did you say? Okay, hold on. Okay. You're, he's moved with compassion. You're moved with compassion, and you loosed him and forgave him the debt. So loose him. I'm tying. Okay, now forgive him of the debt. You are forgiven. 
Okay. All right, now you go, and you run into this, this person you, you work with, okay? She's a servant, too, and she owes you some money. Now you go up to her and grab her by the throat. She owes you $44. $44. $44. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now what are you going to say to her? $41. Okay. Now what do you do? You fell down, too. Fell, fall down on his feet. Say, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. But he would not. Okay, don't, don't show her anymore. <laughs> and cast him into prison. Okay, cast him into prison till he, till he pays the debt. Prison's over there by the door. Go cast him into prison. Till he should pay the debt. So he's in prison now, okay? Yeah. Yes, he says, that's what it says. Okay? Now, I'm one of your, another servant, and I just saw what you did. I just saw what you did. Um, and I went and told the Lord, okay, you just forgave him of that debt, and he ran into one of his people he works with, and he owes, she, he owed $44, and this servant cast him into prison. After you had forgiven him. So then what do you do? Okay, then his Lord, after that, he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant. Say, O thou wicked o servant. O thou wicked servant. I forgave thee all that debt. I forgave thee all that debt. Because thou desirest me. Because thou desirest me. Shouldst not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant? Should thou also have Mm -hmm. fellow servant, even even as he had pity on thee, even as I had pity on thee, mm -hmm. and his lord was wroth. So you're mad now. So you deliver him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. What's the tormentors? I no, won't be the tormentors. He's going to go into prison and be tortured. Tortured. Okay. So cast him into prison. And let the other guy out. <laughs> Why don't I get the heat up? Okay. Then you say to him, I'm sorry. So likewise, I'm sorry, no, this is Jesus. Read that. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you if from your hearts forgave not every one of his brethren their trespasses. No, so that, that is what G, what God is going to do with us. If we're not willing to forgive others, he's not going to be willing to forgive us. Amen. All right, you can come out of jail. Uh, okay, sit down. Okay. Now, the unmerciful servant wouldn't forgive another servant who had the same problem that he had was debt. Um, he didn't have nearly as much debt. The second servant didn't have hardly any debt either. So, I mean, uh, you know, we have people in our, in our lives every day who need forgiveness for the same problems that we have. God wants us to serve them by showing them mercy and forgiveness. Saying, I forgive you is easy, but actually showing mercy and actually having forgiveness in your heart is not quite as easy as just saying it. Saying I forgive you, you know, if you really don't mean it in your heart, then you know you're then you still have that burden in you, in your heart. Um, showing mercy and forgiveness is what Jesus called us to do. He wants us to serve each other by um, being being um, forgiving as he was. He's, he's forgiven, forgiven us of our sins. So we should be willing to forgive others. Um, now we've been working with the, we've been taking napkins home and working to develop habit of serving others in different ways. Um, last week it was to consider others better than yourselves. What are some ways that you considered others better than yourselves? How did you compliment each other? How did you 
He said, good job, a lot. <laughs> he said, good job, good job, good job, good job, good job. Are there any other ways that you guys can think of that you were, that you considered others better than yourselves? Maybe I like how you did this or how you did that. You thanked me for food that I cooked for you guys. You thanked me for that and told me it was good. Um, well, your assignment this week is going to be to show mercy and forgiveness to others. Okay? Huh? A little bit harder. Yeah. It's a little bit harder. You might get irritated with people who don't do things the way you want to. And if you're patient with them, you know, that's a way to show um, mercy and forgiveness. Um, but lashing out, you know, if somebody does something that you don't like and you're, um, you know, you scream at them, get mad at them, you know, that's not showing forgiveness. Um, so we need, to, we're going to show forgiveness this week. I'm going to um, give you guys new napkins. I need my markers back though. Um, <laughs> I have markers. So I'm going to make, uh huh. I got mine. They're in the kitchen? I don't know. Mine's in the kitchen. Oh, you've got your napkin. Okay. Or your I don't marker. Have That's, That's not marker. your marker. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. So I'll, I'll make them when we get. Well, I'll make Ray Ray's now. Or here in a few minutes. So let's practice our memory verse again. All right. Turn back to Mark chapter 10. You guys can put a bookmark in there. It might help you to oh. stay in there. That's what I've done. You got to. No. <coughs> All right. This time, Ray Ray, I want you to read first, then Rusty and then Otto. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever be will be great among you shall be. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest servant of, will be the chiefest, shall be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for so many. Good. Okay. So what are we going to do this week on our napkins? What are we going to do to each, to each other? Apologize to each other. Accept mm -hmm. apologize. Alright, we're going to be forgiving. Show forgiveness and mercy toward each other. Sometimes it's not easy to do. You have to, you have to really think about it. You have to try hard to be forgiving. You may not feel like being forgiving. But it's good for them. It's, like, it's really good for you. Okay, go ahead and stand up. Let's see. You're not tying me up. Can't tie me up. Mama. Where are we going? Huh? Where are we going? 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 Where are we Yeah. 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, lost, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, lost, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, First and second Peter, first John, second John, third John, Jude and Revelation. Father Abraham had many sons, 
Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, nod your head. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, nod your head, turn around. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Nod your head, turn around, sit down. <laughs> Thirty-three in red book. <coughs> Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are you white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Pure and white in the blood of the Lamb. Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bride and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you Spotless are they white as snow, are you washed in the blood of 
says that a wise son makes a glad father. Amen. And Autumn uh, gave y'all a sermon outline for our uh, message this morning, and uh, and I'm thankful uh, for the scriptures and for uh, what the Lord what the Lord gives us in His Word. And uh, I was thinking about the Sunday school lesson and uh, how that it goes along with the prayer that the Lord taught his disciples where he uh, said, uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And uh, I also noticed in the scripture there that uh, was referenced that uh, that uh, so shall my heavenly Father do unto you if you from the heart do not forgive every man their trespasses. So uh, I believe there's a lot of difference in from the heart and from the mind. And, uh, you know, it's, it's from the heart that man believeth unto righteousness. Uh, so the Lord desires our heart and uh, not, just the, not just our mind. And I'm thankful that God looks on the heart and he doesn't look on the uh, the outward appearance of man. So, but we're going to look at uh, uh, at John chapter thirteen this morning, at uh, when Jesus uh, washed his disciples' uh, feet uh, before uh, before he was betrayed and uh, before he was uh, before he was arrested and uh, and taken to be crucified. And so let's look at uh, John chapter 13, and uh, we're going to look at a couple things. That, uh, we're going to look at uh, what this typifies, and we're going to look at, at, what, at, at how this tells us about our Savior and about what he, uh, the, the, his personality and, and, and his love uh, toward us. The Bible says in John chapter 13 at verse 1, Now before the feast of the Passover... When Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after that he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord. And ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that has sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled, that he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. 
Now I tell you before it come, that when it has come to pass, that ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in the spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on his Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoning to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast saith unto him, Lord, who is it? And he answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, By those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, Whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Let's pray together. Father, my Savior, my God, my holy redeemer i thank you father lord for these words of christ our savior i thank you father god lord for the example that he gave us i pray father god lord that you would commit it to our heart not to our mind but to our heart that it would take lodge in the very depths of our soul and that, Father, that we would live according to what you have given us. Father God, Lord, that our lives would be a living sacrifice to you. I pray, Father, Lord, anoint my lips as I speak. Hide me behind the cross of your precious Son. Lord, that each and every one that hears your words today, Father, would be touched by your Spirit, by the hand of my Savior, Jesus. In his name I pray, and amen. amen. <clears throat> Jesus said that the Son of Man was going to be glorified. And he said that if God was glorified in Christ, God is going to glorify Christ, and that he's straightway going to glorify him. The Bible said in Psalm 16 that thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will I suffer thy Holy One to see corruption, but thou wilt show me the path of life. Ray Ray read the scripture, mine own familiar friend and whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But he said, but raise me up that I might requite them. Jesus, though he was betrayed, and though he hung on the cross, I'm so glad for God's resurrecting power. Amen. Even though, even though Jesus knew 
It was written in Psalm that he would betray him 800 years before Jesus came. It was written, even though Jesus knew that Judas would betray him, yet Jesus loved him. And he humbled himself as a servant. And he washed the feet of the one who would betray him. What a Savior. What a Savior. I really take it to heart when we read in Hebrews when it says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? I really fear for those who only believe with the mind and who do not believe with the heart and repent of sin. I fear for those because we have so great a Savior. We have so great, have been given so great a salvation. The Bible tells us here about how Christ cleansed the feet of his, of his disciples. And he said in verse 10, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And Jesus was typifying the actual tabernacle. As he washed his disciples' feet, it was typical, it was a type. We know that Jesus said, search the scriptures. And then you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify of me. So Jesus was, was doing this as a type of the laver, the golden laver in the tabernacle. The Bible tells us there in the book of, of, of Exodus, he tells us about how that, uh, that, that they had to wash before they went into the tabernacle. That outside, before you got to the golden laver, was the brazen altar where the burnt sacrifice was given. Did you know that Jesus is our burnt sacrifice? You know that that burnt sacrifice is typifies his entire sacrifice that he gave everything for us. Amen. Everything. Oh, glory. And he did it willingly. But after this, this burnt sacrifice was the golden laver. And the Bible said that, that thou shalt make a, a laver of, of, of brass and a foot also of brass and wash with all, and thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water in. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet when they go into the tabernacle of the congregation. They shall wash with water that they die not. Glory be to God. So Jesus, Jesus says, you're clean. You're clean by the burnt offering. You're clean by the brazen altar, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Yeah. But brother, where you walk, your feet get dirty. Your feet get dirty. And you live in a world of sin. And you need to wash. Amen. You're clean. Your body's clean through being a believer. But listen, sin will pull you out of fellowship from God. Amen. And you need to be in fellowship with Jesus. Amen. Oh, how sweet. How precious it is that we dwell together in unity with Christ. Oh, how precious it is to be in fellowship with God Almighty. You see, that's what Jesus was doing here in John chapter 13. He had and has an intimate relationship with his disciples. I'm so glad that it's not religion. You see, because there may be those who go through a ritual of washing feet today. And they may wash a, a brother or a sister's feet, but they're inwardly, their heart is full of wickedness and hate and envy and spite. And they may go through some ritual to where they physically do something, but their hearts are not right. Oh, how Jesus' relationship is so precious. He has an intimate relationship with his disciples. Amen. My sheep know me and they hear my voice and they follow me. Hallelujah. What a Savior that we have. What a friend that we have in Jesus. 
Jesus, even the first miracle that he ever worked was when he was at a wedding. Amen. He didn't stand afar off and command things and sit high up on a throne, but he went in to the with the people. And here he and at the wedding he commanded the, the water to be made into wine. He made the good wine and he saved the good wine for last. It wasn't the old fermented wine. It was the good wine that Jesus made. Glory be to God. The Bible tells us over and over again how Jesus would eat with his disciples. It even told us how he would go and eat with publicans and with sinners. Amen. Jesus would go Amen. and spend intimate one-on-one -on -one yeah. time with those who were broken and hungry for the righteousness of God. The Bible tells us about uh, how that even he told us uh, that, uh, that he stands at the door and he knocks. We see up here that Jesus stands at the door and he knocks and he said, if any man will open, I'll come in Amen. and I'll sup with him Amen. and he with me. Jesus desires an intimate relationship of those uh, that, would, that would have fellowship with him. He tells us, blessed is he that will eat bread in the kingdom of God at the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Lord desires intimate fellowship and intimate a time with those uh, that, that, that would. The Bible tells us even that he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He satisfies our mouth with good things Amen. so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. We see even in the Bible how it's typified when Abraham, the angels came to visit him and they had been traveling on their journey. And he says, let a little water be fetched and, and wash your feet. So Jesus, Jesus, even though Judas was going to betray him, even though he knew that his disciples would be scattered and that they would all forsake him, here he showed him his love. The Bible says that he loved his own which were in the world and he loved them unto the end. Unto the end. You know, Jesus will be with you unto the end of the world. Amen. He said, I am with you always. <laughs> you can't go anywhere and not Jesus not be there. Amen. You can't hide from him. Amen. I believe in the days that will come, the Bible says that men will cry for the rocks mm -hmm. to fall upon them and to hide them. I believe that places like down at the Greenbrier that they made for the president in case there's a war, that people will go in those underground bunkers and they'll try to hide. I believe in NORAD out in the Rocky Mountains that they'll go and they'll try to hide under the mountains and try to hide from the wrath of the Lamb. But they'll not be able to hide from God Amen. because He's everywhere. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. I'm so glad that Jesus is everywhere. He loves us to the end. He will be with us always. I think that Jesus is showing us uh, how that he cares in this, in this passage of Scripture, that he cares even for the smallest of details in our life. I have had the enemy throughout my life try to tell me and convince me that God is not concerned about small matters in my life. Amen. But here we see that Jesus is attentive to the smallest detail in your life. You see, a lot of folks might look at it and say, well, if, if, if a man was blind or if a man was lame or, or if a person was dead, Jesus could show some great and mighty miracle. And, but here we see that Jesus cares even about his disciples' feet. That their feet that Jesus takes and, and takes the time uh, to personally wash the dirt from their feet. Jesus personally takes the time to attend he could, have, he could have said, he could have just but merely suggested that Peter do it or one of the disciples and just merely suggested and they would have leapt at the opportunity and said, and, and, yes, Lord, I'll do it. And they would have jumped right at the opportunity to do it. But instead, Jesus himself, Jesus himself girds himself with a towel and he goes and he kneels and he begins washing doing the duty of a slave or a servant and washing, washing the, the disciples' feet. 
A lot of folks would always look for the big things for Jesus, for Christ to do. But the Bible tells us in 1 Peter, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your care upon him. Amen. For he careth for you. See, Jesus cares for even the smallest details. The very smallest actions, the very smallest reactions in our life, Christ cares about every detail that we have. Every detail. Christ, uh, Christ is refreshing to his disciples. You see, back in these times, these folks, they, they wore sandals. Uh, and they walked, a lot of them walked and uh, would walk for miles and miles. They didn't have cars like we have, but they would walk for, for miles. And they would uh, uh, be tired, their feet would be hurting, they'd be aching. And here Christ washes their feet it's symbolically of refreshing, of giving refreshment. And uh, the Bible tells us about, you know, those that have, have uh, been, on a, been through a trial or been through long journeys about how the, the, just as those angels came and Abraham washed, uh, uh, offered, uh, gave them a little water for their feet to be washed, uh, the, the Lord not only uh, gives refreshment after a journey or after a trial, you know, may, maybe you've been through a trial, maybe you've been through a, uh, on, on a journey, and, and the Lord wants to give you refreshment, but also He does it before a trial or before a journey. You see, these disciples... Uh, we're going uh, to go through a great uh, trial because the Savior that had been with them uh, for, for three years in His ministry, uh, He was going to be smitten and the Bible told us that the, the sheep were going to be scattered. That, uh, the Bible tells, tells us even here at the end of this chapter how the, the Lord prophesied that Peter would deny Him three times. So they were going to go through a great temptation and they were going to go through a great trial, but they were, but through this small act, you know it's the small things a lot of times that accomplish great miracles. The, the Bible says, who hath despised the day of small things? God himself here in the form of a man was was uh, kneeling and, and, and washing his disciples' feet. And after this, uh, no doubt after the, the, that he had been crucified and taken from them, no doubt they could look back and remember. No doubt they could look back and remember that he had, he had humbled himself and washed their feet. So not only is it after uh, God want to refresh you after you go through a trial, or after you go through a journey, but maybe God wants to prepare, prepare you for what you're getting ready to go through. Maybe God desires for you to cast all of your care upon Him and, and, and to give Him all the details and to let Him wash you. Let Him wash your feet because He, he wants to refresh you and to strengthen you just as He did Elijah when Elijah went to the cave and he hid in the cave and he thought that Jezebel was going to get him but the angel of the Lord came and fed him and gave him bread to strengthen him Amen. for a 40 day fast. Bless the, Lord. the Lord may just want to refresh you and prepare you for what you've got to endure this week. Just as he took the, the Hebrew children before they went on the journey out of Egypt, he gave them the Passover lamb and they fed and they ate. Not only does he want to, not only does he care for every little detail, not only does he want to be uh, intimately acquainted with us, but he wants to purify us. Isn't it good to be clean? We sang the song there just a little bit ago. Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you trust each hour Amen. in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I tell you, there's no greater joy than to be in His presence. Amen. In His presence is fullness of joy. At His right hand are pleasures forevermore. Oh, it's good to be pure, washed in the blood 
of Jesus Christ. The Bible said in John 15 and 3, when he spoke to his disciples, he says, Now are ye clean by the word that I've spoken unto you. It's the word of God. It's the way, brother, if you don't saturate yourself in the, now listen, all of us have things that we have to do, but you cannot afford to not be in the word of God daily. 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 You cannot afford to not be. Now, does, it, does God require you to be a Bible scholar to be saved? Absolutely not. God requires you to believe with the heart on the crucified, finished work of Calvary. But brother, right. you need the word of God to be washed Amen. daily. Right. Daily. You need it. It will strengthen you. Bless the Lord. It will encourage you. Bless the Lord. When the enemy comes to tempt you, brother, it will purify you. It will purify you. Now you're clean. Through the word which I've spoken unto you. We, we take of the Lord's Supper and, and the Bible tells us that we need to examine ourselves. And so let him eat of this bread. We need to examine ourselves. Brother, I don't know. I'll be truthful with you. I don't know my own heart. I don't know my own heart. But God knows the thoughts and the intents Amen. of my heart. My heart is deceitful. God, my, my own heart will deceive me. Your own heart will deceive you. You need the Word of God Amen. to examine us. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. To, to, to show us what's in there. Is your heart right today? Is your heart right? The Bible says if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship Amen. one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. It's good to be clean. Amen. It's good to be washed. David knew what it was like to be washed and to be clean. He said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. You know what? You want to know the definition of mercy? It's right there. Loving kindness. That's loving kindness. God's God's loving kindness is, a, is equated to mercy. And thy loving kindness, amen, I'm so glad for mercy, as Robin said right there in the lesson. He, the Bible said there that the Lord was moved with compassion. Oh, glory, aren't you glad that it's a verb? Amen, aren't you glad that it's, a, that it's an action? Aren't you glad that he was moved with compassion? The Bible said when Jesus saw the multitudes that they fainted with the shepherd, he was moved with compassion. That means to, that, he, that he wanted to take action. Bless the Lord. He wanted to do something. That's what mercy is. Mercy is compassion and action. That's how much he loves you today. He wants to take action on your behalf. Amen? God wants to make intercession. Jesus wants to make intercession for you to God on your behalf. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says that we often, that we don't know what to pray for as we all. Amen. But the Spirit will make intercession Amen. for us. He says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, Blot out my transgressions. Do you believe that David was saved? I believe David was saved. Amen. I believe David was a man of God. Amen. It says that he was a man after God's own heart. Amen? The Bible said there even before, the, even before he had been anointed, Samuel prophesied of it. Well, he, said it he, he, he told Saul, he said, God's already found a man after his own heart. Amen. I believe David was saved, but David said, wash me, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me, cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Brother, 
In 1 John, the Bible tells us something that's very profound that many people, many people overlook, even the smallest words. I get such a blessing out of hearing Ray Ray read. Listen, y'all think you got a blessing this morning when he was reading it up here. You should have heard him reading it with his door closed in his bedroom practicing it. Bless the Lord, thank you. I could hear him outside of his room, out in the living room. I could hear him shouting it. Bless God. I'm glad for him that they pause at each word a lot of times. And maybe we need to take an example from the out of the mouth of babes. Amen. How that they pause at each word. Because each word of God is significant. Amen. It says in 1 John, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. David said, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Brother, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you can sin and not know about it, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. David said, I acknowledge. I know that I've done wrong. I know that I've done wrong. Lord, have mercy upon me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin that my mother conceived me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Uh, uh, created me a clean heart Amen. and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. That's what Jesus desires today. For each of us to have the joy of the Lord as our strength to be washed, to be clean, to be pure, to be in fellowship. You say, Brother Troy, I have this little thing. I have this little, it's just a little thing that, that I had a problem with this week. And, and you know, Brother Troy, I, I go through, you know, I, I ask the Lord for forgiveness every day. Let me ask you, did you ask him for that thing? Did you ask him for forgiveness for that thing? That very one. Did you ask him for that? Did you acknowledge that one to him? He said, Brother Troy, God's not that concerned about small things. Don't you? Don't you bet on it. He's concerned about the small things. Because it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. God's concerned about the little things. You see, it began with David that he went out there on the balcony. He First thing, he didn't go to war with his brothers. Mm -hmm. He stayed home. And then he came out on the balcony and he saw the woman down there. Yes, That's how it began. Mm -hmm. That's how it began. It began with just the small things. And God desires for you to take the small things to him. And I tell you that he'll wash it. Amen. He'll wash it. Glory be to God. He'll refresh you. He'll bring you into that intimate fellowship that he desires for you to have and he'll make you pure pure whiter than snow amen. oh it's so wonderful to trust in jesus mm -hmm. amen does anybody have a song that you'd like to sing uh, for for an invitation i want to encourage you to come and to pray this morning mm -hmm. if the lord uh, has anything on your heart i encourage you to come give it to him let him wash you amen i'm so glad I'm so glad to be saved, but I'm so glad for His washing power each and every day. Amen. That he gives us. Maybe 124 in the blue book.
Six, I was in Israel, and uh, you mentioned the little fox. In in Israel, the bananas <coughs> start down here, and they feel that stalk clear up there, way above your head. Bananas, yeah. the, the bananas reach up there, and uh, and they had blue bags, plastic bags over the bananas. And uh, and uh, one of the ladies in our group said uh, to Abraham, that's our guide, said, what is this blue bags on those bananas? Wow, Abraham said, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> said, there's a little fox. He travels around and he can smell all these bananas. <laughs> and they put these bags over them and he can't smell them and he won't bother. Well, <laughs> bless the Lord. Wow, amen. Amen. Mm. I saw that Mark 76. <laughs> amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Anyone else? All right. Brother Jim, would you lead us in praise? Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. 